Today I want to talk about a fascinating phenomenon that happens with matrices that's very different than polynomials. So suppose you had two matrices A and B and they're n by n matrices, square matrices, with real entries. And you knew that a to the power n and b to the power n were both zero. You also know that a and b commute, so ab is ba. Can you prove that a plus b raised to the n is actually the zero matrix as well? Let's look at powers of a plus b to get a sense of what might happen. Now, since a and b commute, we can write this using the binomial theorem as the sum k equals zero to m, and that should say m choose k, a to the k, b to the m minus k. Now, since a to the n and b to the n are the zero matrix, if we make the powers of a and b large enough, so if, if k, for example, is at least n, or m minus k is at least n, then the matrix a to the k, b to the m minus k is going to be zero. Um, on the left hand side, if you have k is less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to n, then you'll get a to the k, b to the m minus k, that term is a to the n, a to the k minus n, k minus n is going to be non-negative, times b to the k, m minus k. Um, but if m minus k is greater than or equal to n, then you'll get a to the k, b to the n, b to the m minus k minus n, and b to the m minus k minus n, that exponent is at least zero, so it's okay to write it like that way. And each copy will have a to the n and b to the n inside of it, so we'll get the zero matrix at the end. Okay, so if we can make the terms have exponents that are large enough, then we'll force a plus b to the m to be the zero matrix. All right, so what values of m would make something like that happen? Uh, we'll call that condition star. Well, it does happen if we make m equal to twice n. Right, in that case, our exponents will be k and 2n minus k. And so then, if we think about the fact that k and 2n minus k add up to 2n, at least one of them is going to be n. But if our exponent is smaller, we can't guarantee a condition like this. right? So for example, if we have m is n, then we'll have lower powers of a and b. Um, so definitely, if we replace the n with 2n, we'll get the zero matrix. But at this point, it's really unclear why if you replace with something lower that the terms will vanish. It might actually it might not be the case that the terms vanish, but everything together does. And this is where the power of looking at matrix theory actually matters. The key to figuring out the rest of this is using what's called the minimal polynomial. So the minimal polynomial of a matrix is a polynomial M of X of minimal possible degree for which the matrix you're given actually satisfies. So such that M of whatever matrix you're dealing with, I'll call it A, it's not the same A that we're dealing with above, this is a generic matrix A. The minimal polynomial of the matrix A is the polynomial that satisfies this condition. And it's also a uh, monic. So you can think about this like as a minimal polynomial for like a real number or something like this. So let's look at an example of what this might look like. So here's the identity matrix, the three by three identity matrix. Now there's a relation to minimal polynomials and deal with eigenvalues. So imagine you were trying to calculate the eigenvalues of this matrix. If you don't know what eigenvalues are, it doesn't matter. Um, you would be taking the determinant of this matrix right over here where you subtract lambda from all the diagonal entries. And so you'd get one minus lambda all cubed. Okay, so to find eigenvalues of a matrix like this, you would set this polynomial one minus lambda cubed, which we'll write as one minus x cubed to zero. Now, there's a theorem in linear algebra that says that if you plug a matrix into this polynomial, you get the zero matrix. So the identity minus a all raised to the three is a zero matrix. 
So one minus x cubed is a matrix where uh, is a polynomial where when you plug in our matrix, you get zero. But it's not minimal. You can do a lot better than this. You can find a polynomial of smaller degree that the matrix A actually satisfies. And it's the polynomial one minus x. The identity minus our matrix is the zero matrix. Okay, so this gives us a sense of what the minimal polynomial is. Now we're gonna talk about a couple of theorems that play a role in figuring out why our particular matrix A plus B raised to the n will be zero. Okay, so the first theorem is information about the minimal polynomial knowing something about another polynomial related to the given matrix that we have. So the theorem is if f of x is a polynomial and when you plug in the matrix A into the polynomial, you get the zero matrix, then the minimal polynomial actually has to divide this polynomial f of x. The, the polynomials f, where when you plug in a, you get the zero matrix, are called annihilating polynomials. So this theorem says any annihilating polynomial must have the minimal polynomial as a factor. Okay, so let's say that wasn't the case. So suppose that f of x um, was not a multiple of m of x. So f of x is q of x, m of x, plus a remainder polynomial. And this remainder polynomial, then, because m of x doesn't divide, f of x is a polynomial of degree less than degree, the degree of m. Now, the problem with this is if we plug in the matrix A into the polynomial R of x, you get the zero matrix because it's f of A, which is a zero matrix, minus q of A, m of A, and m of A is a zero matrix, or is a zero matrix. And that's a contradiction because the degree of R is less than the degree of M, and we said M is the polynomial of minimal degree that A satisfies. Okay, so then any annihilating polynomial has the minimal polynomial as a factor. Now, this actually tells us even more information if we relate it to how we compute determinants. So a corollary, corollaries are results that come relatively directly from theorems. A corollary is that the degree of the minimal polynomial of an n by n matrix has to be less than or equal to n. And the reason is because there is a polynomial that we know that A will always satisfy. It's the characteristic polynomial. That's the polynomial that you use to compute the determinant. It's the matrix that you get, or the polynomial you get by subtracting x times the identity from the matrix A. This is actually, you set this to zero to find the roots of this polynomial in order to find the eigenvalues. And a theorem called the Cayley-Hamilton theorem, which is a theorem that's talked about a lot in linear algebra courses, says that the degree of this polynomial is n, and when you plug in a into this polynomial, you actually get the zero matrix. Okay, so our minimal polynomial divides any annihilating polynomial and has degree at most n. So let's look at our matrix A plus B then. A plus B is an n by n matrix. So the characteristic polynomial, or sorry, the minimal polynomial of it has degree at most n. At the same time, we know that A plus B raised to the 2n is the zero matrix. So if we let f of x be x to the 2n, then that polynomial is an annihilating polynomial. We plug in a plus b, we get the zero matrix. So the minimal polynomial will have to divide that polynomial f of x. So the minimal polynomial actually divides the polynomial two, uh, x to the 2n, but it's a polynomial of degree at most n, so we put these two together, the minimal polynomial is going to be x raised to some power where that power is less than or equal to n. So the minimal polynomial is either identically 1, it's probably not going to be identically 1, x, x squared, x cubed, or x to the n. In either case, 
we'll have when we take a plus b and raise it to the n, that should say, it'll be the, z or it's fine the way it's written, a plus b raised to the m is going to be the zero matrix for m, some m less than or equal to n, where that m is the de degree of the x or the exponent on the minimal polynomial. Um, so, if, for example, if the minimal polynomial was x to the 5, we'd have a plus b to the 5 is a zero matrix. So if we multiply this a plus b to the m by a plus b to the n minus m, we'd get the zero matrix, which is exactly what we wanted, the fact that a plus b raised to the n is the zero matrix. So this is a really cool, interesting phenomenon about matrices that really exploits this minimal polynomial to get you that powers of matrices that are smaller than you would expect give you zero matrices in the end.